Here it comes. Here we come. You guys ready for this or what? Through Are the flop. Are we ready? I'm going to oh, introduce ready. you. You don't get to just start. Oh, I'm, I'm a little Oh, you better hurry it up. I don't have that pause. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, without further ado, of course, you know, it's been a glorious day. Don't forget, ZBrush is available to you if you're watching uh, online or here in person. We've got the 20% uh, the off uh, sticker price, as they say. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce uh, two colleagues and friends of mine, uh, Joseph Drush. Like? Like, I'm just you're, laughing at the smoke. Yeah, it's, you know, the we got a smoke machine. This, this is six yeah, years in the making, Seriously, the in the, yeah, it could get crazier tomorrow. Every you never year. Know. We Can got I have a, a smoke things. machine? Can I have a smoke machine? And we're like, <laughs> Louis. No. No, Louis. I mean, I'm here to introduce, obviously, Joseph Drust and Solomon Blair, uh, members of the Pixelogic team. They're going to take us through uh, all the good stuff. And uh, hopefully you'll learn something and maybe be inspired. So put your hands together. A round of applause for my, my boys from Pixelogic. Thanks very much. All right. So is everybody still awake? Yeah. <laughs> okay. In honor of Paul, we're going to have to do it. I need a Z and a brush. Yes. It's got to be big. He's watching. <laughs> what, what is Paul going to think the, of this? On the count of three. <laughs> One, two, three. Z brush. Z brush. One more. <laughs> All right. Work, All right. Work, we had work. to do that. We had to do that. It was. It was Look, up Look up here. Look up here. Look up here. Look up here. <laughs> we're, we're, that's a shout out more than anything. <laughs> all right. So thank you all for coming out for the 2019 ZBrush Summit. So you guys have been having a lot of fun. Um, and you guys at home as well, watching all the streams. We have some great presenters that were going today. And then we'll continue tomorrow and then on to Sunday as well. So as you're here, if you're here live, has anyone competed in the Emoji Challenge? Anyone? We got a few? Yes, got okay, a few. okay. All right. So the Emoji Challenge is going on here live on site. You're going to get a nice 15 minutes. It's not a lot of time. Not at all. Not a lot of time. And your goal is to sculpt an emoji, yep. and then the winner of that contest will be taken home an Ultimaker printer. So oh, yeah. Oh, good yeah. prize on that for 15 minutes. You can enter multiple times. So definitely check that out. So we're going to go through some things first here that's going on with the summit this year. And then me and Saul, we should probably show something, right? Oh, we got to show something. Something. Yeah, we got a few, a we got a few tricks. A little something. So since our last summit last year, what have we been up to here at Pixelogic? So in 2019, we released uh, ZBrush 2019 appropriately. 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 <laughs> and that version introduced some great uh, new things like the NPR filtering and also some of the Spotlight Snapshot 3D functionality. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites. One of your favorites. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in addition to that, we also revamped ZBrush Central. So if you guys have not checked out the new ZBrush Central, it is entirely revamped. You can go through and post all images on there, and it's really easy to do now. We've fixed up and cleaned up some of the things that you guys were not liking in the old one. So we've kind of streamlined that a bit more. It's so more. pretty now. It is pretty. It's so pretty. It is pretty. So just set it on your little browser. You know, have one of your startup screens. Just go to Zebra Central. Oh, these guys Get that do. inspiration during the day. Awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. And uh, Melissa, you've seen her up here talking. So if you like the new Zebra Central, definitely give her a good pat on the back. Maybe a hug. Maybe a hug. <laughs> So in addition to the new Zebra Central, we also started our subscription model. So if you guys are unaware of this, we have a one-month subscription and a six-month subscription. So we still have perpetual licenses. We didn't give these away. So you guys, you know, are used to perpetual licenses where I bought ZBrush years and years and years ago, even before I was working with Pixelogic, and I've never paid for an upgrade since. So our perpetual licenses still going strong. We have those for ZBrush and ZBrush Core, but then now we also offer you, uh, offer you guys the opportunity to go to a subscription model. So if you only need ZBrush for a few months or maybe have to, you know, a project and you're building your team up, um, you can go with that and uh, go for one month or six month plans of that. In addition to that, we also released a bunch of point releases with ZBrush 2019. So if you guys are not upgraded to the latest version of ZBrush 2019, take note here, there is a 2019.1.2. So we've gone through and we do these point releases to kind of fix any issues that may come up. And uh, we take the feedback from our support stuff. Salman's mm -hmm. a oh, yeah. big. I've probably talked to a few of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely uh, 
upgrade to the latest version. All the upgrades are free. So even if you have that old version of 4R6, Somebody out here is running 4R6. Oh, you know it. Uh -huh. Oh, you know it. So, somebody's nodding right Why there. Why are uh -huh. you still running 4R6? <laughs> Come on now, OK? You can upgrade to ZBrush 2019.1.2 as long as you have a license. Of course. Yes, right. For free. So There's no reason not to do it. So for the summit this year, one of the things that we have started doing is that if you are not a ZBrush or oh, ZBrush yes. core user, we are offering 20% off our perpetual licenses for the summit. So this started today, and it'll end on Monday at 11.59 p.m. Get it while it's hot. Yes. Uh, so this is 20% off both ZBrush, which is the professional version, and ZBrush core. So both of them are now, you can go right now to the store at store.pixelogic.com and get 20% off on both of those. So now's the time. Me and Jessica were trying to figure out the slogan for it's you know it's not what, now the time to jump now's in. Now's the time. Now's the time to sculpt in. Now's the time. <laughs> oh, to, okay, I see where you're going. We we mm. couldn't find it. I don't know, Julie. You got any ideas? She's <laughs> yeah, got nothing. Poor Julie. Poor Julie. <laughs> <laughs> so in addition to the perpetual licenses, we're also offering 20% off for our one month and six month subscription plans as well. So the same thing here, we're starting today and it'll be ending on Monday at 11.59 p.m. And there are two coupon codes that you must use to activate this 20% off. So for the one month, the coupon code is SUMMIT one month. And for the six month, the coupon code is SUMMIT six month. And both of those can be accessed at store.pixelogic.com. Now, if you guys watched the stream yesterday, a lot of the artists are here on site as well, if you guys have been running around and talking to them, we are, had the 2019 ZBrush Live Sculpt Off. So 24 artists were competing for the single championship belt this year. So we changed some things up. So in the past, we've had the two divisions. We've had the organic and the hard surface. So this year, we switched it up, and we allowed the artists to sculpt either organic or hard surface, or they could do a little bit of both. And we give them just a vanilla version of ZBrush. So if you just went to my licenses after you have a license and download ZBrush, that's what they started with. And in three hours, they completed a sculpt and a final image. So the voting is now live for this, and you can vote for your favorite image at vote.pixelogic.com. So definitely vote for your favorite image. We'll be collecting those vote tallies from uh, the site here coming tomorrow on Sunday, and I think at 3 o'clock the voting closes. And then we will announce the winner of that on Sunday at 6 p.m. So we'll announce the winner of the sculpt off there. And the prizes this year were insane uh, for the winner. So first, pl first place, second place, and third place are taking home a ton of stuff. Yeah, oh yeah. And in addition to that, we want to also thank our sponsors this year for the summit. So we have a whole great group of sponsors. A lot of our sponsors have booths here at the show. So if you're in the LA area, definitely come on out to the summit. It's free to get into the ZBrush Summit. You can come over and talk to our wonderful sponsors. They have a bunch of stuff on displays there, a lot of 3D prints, some really There's cool some stuff. some awesome prints out there. Also, we want to thank uh, Noman, because they let us use of this course. awesome space every year. Maybe a big round of applause for Noman. Yeah. <laughs> every year, they let us come in. They let Louie bring a fog machine this year. <laughs> I so think that's Louis gonna be a and the fog picture. machine. So that's, that's, they get a double clap for that. Oh, easily. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm trying to, that's your water. Oh, yeah. Hold on, I gotta find some water here quick. Yeah, I got a bunch. Maybe. Maybe not. I said blue right. M&Ms. Blue M&Ms. Thank you, thank you. All right, so now we're gonna, I guess we should go into what you're all waiting for. Yeah. We got Paul in the back room. <laughs> Has anyone seen <laughs> Paul? <laughs> so me and Saul are going to go through some things here that we've been working on. So we're going to give you a little bit development speak sneak peek of some of the items. And we have a bunch of stuff, as always. So we go through and we end up <sighs> doing a bunch of different things. And some of these are still being fleshed out, worked on. But we're going to go through and try to show you guys some of the things that we're excited about that we've been generating. And we're not going to be able to probably get through all of these. Um, Z-Long just took way too long. <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> that's definitely it. <laughs> but it was awesome, 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 awesome. So we're going to go through some of these. And I'm going to start, and then we're going to pass it over to Saul. Drop the hammer, Thor. Let's Drop see the it. hammer. All right. So let me see if, if Tomo's got my uh, thing here. 
So have you ever gone to a restaurant and it's still wiggling? <laughs> no? no. Where is he? <laughs> one, one good trick, the waiters love it. They don't. They hate it. They bring the fish, right? And you take your fork or your knife and you put it underneath the tail and you just wiggle it a little bit. <laughs> you do that every time. I do, you? and they hate me for it. <laughs> so here I have a little fish I was making, and a few people have come up to me and said, I know what that fish is from Red Dead Redemption. That's exactly what I said. I've never seen that thing in the wild, but video games yeah. let me know what this fish 100%. is. 100%. Yeah. So I was sculpting this fish, and as I was doing this, um, you know, sculpting scales like this takes, you know, can take a bit of time. And so my basic uh, premise of this here, I'm going to expand my subtool folders here while I do this, is that I'll start with, you know, the body of the fish. So I have something like this. And for me, I'll sculpt the base forms. I use a lot of Sculptors Pro to come in and pull these shapes out. And then I'll get to about something like here. And now I want like a guide or reference to come on this. So for scales of a fish, what I do is I'll usually texture the fish, right? So I'll take some different images, combine them over top of each other, and now I have a clear representation of these scales on the fish. And at this stage, I'll switch to, say, my clay buildup brush here, if I can get my keyboard here clicking. And I'll come through and I'll start, you know, sculpting these scales. Now, as I'm doing this, at this stage, since this texture has so much contrast in it, I can't see what I'm sculpting, right? So at times I come over here and I toggle this off, toggle it back on, and I go back and forth to try to see, okay, that scale's kind of there. I want to sculpt a little bit more, do that, do that. And I'm constantly doing this workflow. So we've added this thing now that I've been using quite a bit since we've added it, is the ability to just temporarily fade the color or the poly paint, which either can be texture or poly paint, on your model, just so you can kind of see it. So before I could do this, turn it on and off and go back and forth, I could also fill it with, say, a white color and kind of wash that poly paint out. But I'm destroying that texture that's on the model. So now in the render tab up here, we have this fade opacity slider. And I can change this, and this is going to fade the poly paint on my mesh. So this is all temporary, so I can do this, and now I can come in and sculpt my scales out, and I can see them, and then after I'm done, I can go back here and fade it back out and get back to where I was. So for a workflow process with this, it's very handy, especially if you need to get those details in, you have a texture that's already done the model, and you just want to enhance those sculptural parts. Now, with this fish here, I started like this, and I started going through and making these scales. And then I was like, this is going to take me like six years. <laughs> <laughs> How so, much symmetry can you add to me? Yeah, that? Okay. only get one side. <laughs> only get one side. So, with this, we've added another functionality. So, I'm going to come up here, and I'm just going to turn my fade opacity off here, and then turn off my color. So, I've sculpted one of these scales. Now, there are many ways I could go at this point here. I could have you know, kept with that texture one and kept sculpting these different scales. I could go and create a brush. I could create an insert mesh brush and create all sorts of different things and then come back and apply it. But it's kind of detached. Like, I'm working on this model now. My mind's on this model. I don't want to go kind of break away, go to another process, generate an asset, and come back over. So what we've done is we've added a set of brushes that are called extractor brushes. So if I go to the brush palette here, open this up, these little brushes over here. So we have an extractor and an extractor drag rect. Now if I select this brush, it's going to give me this little drag rectangle stroke. I need a glove. I was just looking like, <laughs> did I bring it? I forgot mine Did you too. bring the glove? Look at that, I'm here. Julie. You got one? Sure got let's, let's do this. I'm How many? fix the scale a little bit here quick. How many you got? I'm getting my glove. Yeah, just frisbee it over. I saw you throwing stuff <laughs> in the crowd earlier. No, to us, of course. Good. Good. <laughs> here you go, man. Here we go. Oh, here we go. What else you got over there? <clears throat> so these are uh, some custom gloves that Mike Morgan sent to yes. us. And these are from uh, artistglove.com. And now look, my hand goes across the screen. You oh, really nice. just pr like promoted that so well. I actually heard the squeak. Yeah, I heard the squeak. Was yeah, perfect. I was like, dang it. I need the glove. <laughs> yeah, he did a great job with those. <laughs> and, and we're done. <laughs> Thanks, Louie. Thanks, Louie. All right, so I've made my one scale. 
And now I want some more of these, right? So we've made this brush called the extractor brush. And what this brush is going to do, it's going to look at your undo histories. And it's going to allow you, through projection, to find the difference between your model from one undo to another undo and allow you to extract the sculptural detail between those. So with this scale here, I have this. And then if I come up here to my undo slider here and I go all the way back to the initial start, this is my initial thing. So I have fish one here, no scale, and then fish down here with scale. So what I want to do is on my timeline here, I want to tell ZBrush that I want to pick up from where it was at the start and then find only the changes that have happened from that point to the end of the timeline or the undo histories bar. So I'm going to come over here and hold control and click the very start bar here to set that point. So once again, that is this point with no scale. And then now I have the point with the scale. Let me actually get my control click there. And now with this brush, I want to press G, which is going to go into grab mode. And I can scale this up a little bit so you guys can see this. We're going to get a nice new little color circle. Ooh. And now I can click and drag. And this is going to work kind of like you're used to with the MRGBZ grabber, except it's doing it on the model itself. So now as I grab this, it's going to now create an alpha. And it's going to do the difference that I'm getting between that part I marked on the undo history and my current one. And I've now pulled that scale off as a new asset. Now with this, I can come across my model and start dragging this out and start getting you know, more of those scales. Now once again, this is also looking like it's going to be the most tedious thing ever, right? So not only do we have the ability to drag it out with, say, this drag rectangle brush and capture these sculptural details, but we can also use it in a dragging form where we can actually drag across the model and pick up any details along that path. So I can come over here to the brush palette, and now I can select the extractor brush. And this one, the basic difference is the one had drag rectangle, and this one now has a stroke of dots. So with this, I can come across my model. I can press that G button again to pick this up. And now I can pick a point on my scale here. And as I drag across, it's going to look at that surface and calculate that between the drag. So now I've picked that up. Once again, I'm using that first point that gets it. and the last point, <laughs> and it's now giving me an alpha, right? So you can do this multiple times as you're working, right? So if I want to pick this up again, maybe I had a little bit, I want to get a little bit out of the range here. So I'm going to hit that G key again to get my grabber, draw this out. It's going to generate that brand new alpha here again. And now I can come through on my sculpt here and drag it out, and it's going to be ready to go. So you can keep using this and now come through and start populating the stuff across my model. Now, this will work with any model. So it also doesn't matter what topology you have. So the base premise here is that it's using a projection process to do this. And so what this means is that, say, I have a creature like this. So here I have my little alien, alien from Area 51. Are you, uh, are you in on this, by the way? Are it you was, joining everybody at Area 51? Is that the point? It was not me with the Naruto <laughs> run. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just checking. <laughs> check so I actually, we did, so this model I sculpted at Comic-Con. This was one of I my, uh, my Comic-Con demos. It was, Area 51 was there, too. You got a lot of people that, stopping that at the, the booth, yeah, actually, so, for that one. So I made my little alien here. <laughs> He's got his little slug creature, all right? And so let's say I want to come through and... You know, may want to add those scales to this model. So since I picked it up from the fish, now I can come across on him and drag this out. And now I'm getting those scales transported on my alien. Well, he's an alien, not a fish. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> so why would he want those? I mean, come on. So let's sculpt something new. So I'm going to come in with this, and let's give him... He's going to get some gills still. Oh, I was going to say <laughs> warts, but that's cool. He, he still yeah, needs some gills. gills. I'm in. I mean, he's not a fish. <laughs> so I'm going to come in and sculpt, you know, some of these little kind of things here. Like maybe I want something along this area here. So maybe something like that, and then maybe enhance these a little. There we go. So just, just some little, little doodaddles. It's a technical term. Doodaddles, that is what they call them. And now let's say I've done this, I've got my sculpt, and now I want to copy this and use it somewhere else. So I'm not creating a new brush, I'm not jumping to another tool, I'm on my same model. Now once again, this process is going to look at your undo history. So it's going to just look at the point of my model. So if I go back here, this is what I'm at for my start. I can place this wherever I want, which I'm going to show in a second. But we're going to do this here, back at the start, and then we're going to come over here to this one. And now let's pick this up again. So we're going to go and grab our extractor brush, we're going to hit G. I'm going to enlarge this a little bit. 
And I'm gonna drag from here and drag all the way down. And now I've got this, right? Ooh. Now you'll notice that when I dragged, I came across this little bump right here, but it didn't pick up the bump. Do you know why that is? Because that first point that I marked on this timeline already had that bump. So it's looking at those details and it's going to do a projection between those. So now I can take these and I can start adding more of these features onto my mesh. Now let's say I want a little knobby thing inside here as well. So I'm gonna go back to my clay buildup brush. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna make these little kind of, they could be eyeballs, they could be just spheres. You never know. Do hickeys. So now I have this, Perfect. right? So now let's say I like this here, but now I just like the spheres, right? So I don't want the outer edge, I just want the spheres themselves. So I can come up here to my timeline and I can go to the spot where I had no spheres. So this is the no sphere spot here. Hold down control, mark that position, go to the end. Now let's do that grab again. So I'm gonna get my extractor brush, going to press that G button there, scale this up a little bit and drag across these. Since I'm picking it up from that spot that had those circle of points, I'm now just getting the dots. So this is really, really powerful because now you can focus to any part on your sculpt and grab just details. This works great for skin, it works for all sorts of stuff. So if you come in and sculpt just a little bit and then maybe you added another effect on top of it but then you only want that effect, you just go to where that effect started on the timeline, it's gonna grab from that point to this point and then allow you to use that as a new brush. So really cool stuff there. Now in addition to this, why we were doing this, let's hold another one here is I started thinking of ways to use this. So, of course, I went to my backyard and started scanning. Oh <laughs> Come on, this isn't anything new, people. <laughs> Every year. It, you guys have made it a thing. I just have to do it now. So I've got some stones. I've got a little cracked dirt. I've got some more dirt. You got it all, man. I got some gravel. <laughs> I got some pine needles. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> and I've got some tree bark. So these are all have, you know, sculptural detail. You can see here, we'll, we'll give you another little different color there. And then we also have texture, right? So let's say I want to grab the surface of this, right? So I'm going to come over here. We're going to get my extractor brush still. Press G and drag this out across my model here. Boop. You got to make that sound. That's... Too. The best sound effect you could have come up with. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's all you get. Just a little, little nudge. <laughs> As you see, I'm getting the alpha detail. Well, I like the alpha detail, but I want the color too. So I'm going to come over here, <clears throat> activate RGB. Let's do that again. Boop. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's a little... It's, I was in the sleep mode. You were in the sleep mode? <laughs> yeah. And so now I've got the alpha, and then I also have the corresponding texture. So not only can I grab the sculptural details, but I can also grab the RGB. So now let's go over to my little dynamish sphere here. So I've extracted this from another subtool, and now I want to apply it to another mesh. So I'm going to come across my model here, got my RGB on, I'm going to sculpt this out, and I'm getting this. Okay? So I have all the sculptural details, but if I switch to, say, flat color, not quite getting the texture, right? So you guys may be aware, I'm sure some of you are in here, is that currently with the version of ZBrush you guys have, if you have a texture and you apply it to your model, the alpha is going to come into play and start clipping that texture out. So the texture is going to be applied and then the alpha is going to come in and kind of clip it out, right? So it's going to clip out parts of your texture so you're never going to get that full texture on your model when you have an alpha on your brush. So this is a, kind of a problem if I want that you know, tree trunk texture along with the sculptural details, right? So we've added now, up here at the top bar here, is this little A button. And this is going to toggle the mode of allowing the texture be affected by the alpha as the sculpt happens, or have the texture not be affected by that alpha. So if I come up here and turn this off, and now apply this stroke, you're gonna see I'm gonna get this. So now I have the texture, which is getting pulled correctly, and the sculptural detail getting pulled as well. Now you see that this still has some fall off here, 
And this fall off is controlled by your focal shift. So if I come up here and adjust this, I'm now going to get more of that hard edge along that texture there. And this will work with you know, any alpha and texture combination. So I'm not only limited to using this alpha here. Like, let's say I want to switch it to, say, one of the preset ones. We'll say I get this cardboard one here. And now I can apply those sculptural details, and that alpha is no longer going to fade with that alpha, or that texture is no longer going to fade with that alpha. So this is really handy for coming in and taking a texture, mixing it up with a different alpha, getting those sculptural details, and also getting the painting at the same time. No wows? Boop. <laughs> there we go, baby. There were some whistles out there. Some. They're just shocked and awed. Because this one for me, it's like I'd have to do like a whole bunch of steps to get that color back. You can recreate your and whole now backyard now. I can just do it. It's yeah, perfect. look, here. I can come in here. You want some pine needles? We'll get yeah, you some pine needles. There you go. There it Hit is. that G button. Boom. Pine needles. <laughs> and then we can come over here. And let's, there you go. Love it. Wow. Pine needles. Pine yes. needles. Pine needles, people. But when the green pollen comes, every year it comes, you better be inside. <laughs> <laughs> there is so much pollen. <laughs> it's just a jungle over there. All right. We're back to the oh, fish. Oh, back to the fish again? Okay. Back to the fish. All right. This one's dead or alive. <laughs> <laughs> so, we showed off the extractor brush. And now... We showed off that alpha thing. And I want to show one more thing that we've had here. And this kind of plays on that functionality as well. So the extractor is going to allow you to go through and grab the details from your mesh at different points in the timeline. So you could start with that, say, model that's in Sculptors Pro, and that's your undo here. And then you transform to DynaMesh, you maybe Z Remesh. And then you now want to you know, pick up stuff. The difference between that and that, you're going to be able to do that with the extractor. Now, another brush we've added here is a brush called History Recall. And History not Recall, Recall. Not Total Recall. History Recall. History Recall. <laughs> total History We were thinking recall. of calling it Total Recall. Total we History really Recall. We really were. We were right there. Gosh, why we didn't we do that? We still recall? can. We still can. Let's take a vote. Should we call it Total Recall? Yeah. Yes. All right. All right. All right. I like it. <laughs> I think there's some, uh, some legal issues with that one, but I don't know. Maybe not. All right, so the history recall brush is going to work a lot like projection, but it's going to allow you to do projection in real time. So is, no one's going to understand this until I show it, though. <laughs> Just give the people Some what people they are want. coming together and be like, oh, what? 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 History total? So I've got my fish here with all these scales. And now let's say I don't like the scales anymore. <laughs> You're so indecisive. I don't, I don't like them. <laughs> so I have that. And then while, before I did my scales, like a smart ZBrush user, I, I made a duplicate version of my model just in case things went bad. That is a pro move right there, sir. Things go bad. <laughs> it happens. So you just got to be OK with it. So I've got my untextured version, non-sculpted version, and then I've got my sculpted version. Well, let's say as I was doing this, I decided that I really only want scales on the tail. That's clearly that's a. That's I was getting ready to eat the fish. Yeah. Descaled half of them, uh -huh. and all that's left is the. I tail see where scales. you're going with this. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So the problem right now, as I have, is so with this model here. In order to clean these scales off, I could say come in, and start trying to sculpt these off, right? Nope. Boop. Nope. Nope. <laughs> I could smooth. No. No. I could try so smooth stronger. Even that's not going to do it. It's the only way to smooth, by the way. You just keep this on one, people. You're a big proponent. You just keep this on one. This is the strong smooth. That's a pro tip right there. Strong smooth. Strong smooth. Yeah, you got to clap out that one. <laughs> Look, looking a little bit better with that strong smooth. But no, still not giving me what I want. What about the uh, gizmo smooth all? I'm just saying. We're not going to that salmon. <laughs> not right now. Fine. Stop. I've got this. <laughs> Stop it. The pollen season is coming. All right. So I've got this part that had no scales on it, right? So let's say I want to take this one, mix it up, and erase those scales that I had on the other model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to that history recall brush. And with this, I'm going to store this model into memory. So I'm going to come up here to the timeline. I'm going to hold Control, and I'm going to click. And this is now going to store this version of the mesh, right? So it's stored it. 
Now, if I go back to the body of the fish here, since these are in the same space, so they're sitting in the same space, if I go to the body now and I come through and I use this history recall brush, what it's going to do, it's going to take this model and then it's going to go, hey, you want to recall to that other model you just stored. And this is going to do a projection process. And as I do this, I'm going to be able to race oh, you away. There we go. That's a crowd pleaser. They get it. They get it. Now, this is also at this stage, it's controllable, right? So I can control the intensity of this. If I only want it to fade slightly, I can do that. So I can knock stuff down. So say I had like some wrinkles that I had on a mesh that weren't there, and then I have the wrinkled version. I can come through and just knock them down a little bit just by changing the intensity, right? And this storage of this is going to be remembered. So when you use this brush, you're storing something, and then you're going to use it on another part of your model. Now, as an example of this, oh my gosh, earthquake, come oh, on. Cover your eyes, kids. Come on. <laughs> this is a family show. <laughs> So we got Earthquake. He's a crowd favorite. Next year, he's going to be up here. Right there, in the smoke. Don't listen, Julie. Don't listen, Julie. You're here forever. So here's another example, right? So let's say I got Earthquake. He likes his clothing. He's, he's stylish he's in a Earthquake stylish world. Guy. That yep. rope belt, I mean, that's so 2019. <laughs> that's it for sure. <laughs> So let's say with him, I have his clothing, right? But it's not really form-fitting enough, right? So what I can do with this is I can take Earthquake and let's store him the memory, right? He's always in my memory. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up and dream every night of Earthquake, man. <laughs> Just dream of Earthquake. In his mid-motion pose. And now with this, I'm going to go down to his kimono here. And we're just going gonna to turn off the uh, sculptural stuff here so you guys can see this. We'll switch to a different Mac cap here first. And let's say with him, I want to come through, and now I want to make his kimono fit him a little better, right? He's been eating a lot. He's been working out. He's like Saul here, going to the gym. <laughs> we look so not, much alike. Not skipping <laughs> leg day. <laughs> and so now I want to like tailor this hands. to it. So I'm going to come across his kimono, and I have the history of him stored. So I'm using him in the history, and now I can project across that. Oh, yeah. Woo! Yes. So now I can come through. I love the applause for that. And start tailoring this to fit him a little bit better, right? So I can come through and just, just so softly, so softly. Do you think somewhere Joseph Paul Bennett is smiling? Well, Paul Bennett's going to be smiling soon. <laughs> soon enough. <laughs> He's not smiling now. He will be. All right. So that, also, that was the sculptural version of it. We can also do this with texture as well. So let's say... Earthquake's starting to get fashionable now. He likes that open back. He wants those clavicles to breathe. So in right, right now, open back. <laughs> so I'm going to turn on the RGB with this. I still have him stored in memory, right? So when I come across him and start sculpting on this, it's going to start projecting the difference, right? So now I've come through, and he's getting that air he so deserves. <laughs> <laughs> right there. He deserves it. He deserves he it. He definitely does. Look at that. So another awesome thing you can do with this history recall brush. And we've been playing with this, and there's so many things. Just You can take a model from a whole other scene and then project it into another mesh just using this brush. So the base premise here, when you guys eventually get this, I don't know if we're going to give it to them. I don't know. Should we? No. Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Later. Yeah. We'll see. We'll gauge the reaction. We may keep this one for ourselves. <laughs> <clears throat> And so it's going to take one model and then project another. And as long as they're in that same space, you're going to be able to project those details together because it's doing a projection, not a morph. This is so it. Remember that. Not a morph. Not Total a morph. Recall. Not a morph. Total recall. All right. So I got another thing. What you got? All right. Let's pull this up. I made a triangle. That's beautiful, Joseph. And a red thing. <laughs> There's triangles everywhere. This is geometry, people. <laughs> geometry. That's fair. That's fair. Geometry. It's all triangles. You turn the polyframe on. <laughs> That's a growth. And it only took me like three hours to do this. Okay. All right. So I don't know if you guys saw Paul's, Paul Bennett's. 
presentation. I'm going to describe some stuff that he already described in an immaculate, amazing way. And I'm going to butcher it. <laughs> Just going to let you guys know right now. Just remember what you saw in his presentation. And when I'm talking, just think of what he said. Total recall it. Total yes, recall it. Exactly. <laughs> all right. So, 3D printing, toy creation, all sorts of stuff. You got these things called draft angles. And this comes into play when you're doing little bit molds, right? So let's say I've got a part. It's this nice little red square. And I make a mold for it, right? So when you make these things, you don't want something like this. Because this is going to get stuck in that mold, right? So I'm not going to be able to get it out, right? Paul did such a better job. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> and then another, so to correct this, what you can do is on your part, you want to establish these angles. So that now when this part is released, you get this nice gapping around it, and it's going to pop right out. So it's not going to rub against the edges of your mold. It's not going to cause all sorts of problems. So this is bad, and this is good, right? So this is used a lot in mold making, manufacturing, as Paul described, all in the toy world. It's a huge thing, right? So you want to go through, and before you spend the time to print these parts out, send them off to get a mold made, you want to make sure that these things are where you need them to be. So with this, I have another example here of kind of the mold process. So I've got a mold, and I've got this part here. And this would be part of those A and B type molds. So I have my piece. It's got this center line going through it. So I'd have one mold on this side. And then this part would go like this and pop out of that. And then I'd have another mold on the other side allowing me to cast that part. So think of it as I printed something, and now I want to make a lot of them. So what we've added is the ability to see the draft angles on your model in real time. So as an example of this, I have this model here. And this process is all real time. So it's an interactive process here. I can come up here to the transform palette. And in here, I have this little button that's called Draw Draft Analysis. Now when I turn this on, I'm going to get some crazy coloring. right? So I'm getting some greens and some reds and some yellows. In here, we also have the ability to set a direction. So right now, the direction of my part is going from green to red. So if I was going to mold this, I could see which areas are going to get trapped in that mold. Now, for this part here, I want to have those two molds coming from top to bottom, that A and B mold. So I'm going to come to the transfer palette, and I'm going to set my direction from this angle. And when I do this, I'm now going to get this updating in real time. So I'm going to see my parting line along my mesh. I'm going to see the areas that have that draft angle that I set. So now I could print this out and cast it, and it's not going to get stuck in that mold. Has everybody got that? Just watch Paul Bennett. He explains it so much better. Yeah, there we go. Joe says trust. Joe says trust. All right. So that's just, just want to get an explanation out there. So now let's show a little bit of examples here. So the first example I have here, let's turn this off real quick. <laughs> you really owned that one, didn't you? <laughs> so this is the official ZBrush currency. You can use it towards subscriptions and also the perpetual license. The ZBrush Arcade. However, you don't get 20% off. Oh. Oh. So this is my earthquake coin. I'm coining it. Oh. <laughs> Dad jokes for the win. So let's say with my earthquake coin here, I want to go and I want to manufacture these. I want to make thousands of earthquake coins. Thousands. <laughs> and we're just going to come out here one year and we're just going to throw just earthquake like coins. McDuff, Rain in earthquake right coins, in. right? <laughs> so let's check my draft angle on earthquake here, right? So I'm going to go up the transform palette. I'm going to activate my draw draft analysis. I'm going to set my direction. <clears throat> oh, man, he's looking pretty good. He's looking really good. He's looking pretty good. Oh, look, oh. we got our parting line. Looking pretty good. What is going on with this ear? Mm, we got mm -mm. red. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So Earthquake's got some issues, right? Right along that ear. So this will work with anything inside of ZBrush. It's real time. It's doing a visualization on your model. So what can I do to solve this? I can simply just sculpt, 
right? So let's get the clay buildup brush. Let's come here and start sculpting this out here, maybe using that smooth stronger. That's incredible. And you're going to see this update in real time. <clears throat> so now I can come through, and with very little effort, I can now fix Earthquake's ear. And now I can send this off to be minted. Send it. Send it to the mint. It's going to be. The you're mint's gonna have to... definitely going to do that for you too, <laughs> for sure. The U.S. mint's taking that. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be these little, like, you know, the little coin collector things, uh -huh. and it's just going to be like a special earthquake one. <laughs> one million dollars. <laughs> uh -huh. It's going to be legal tender. It's going to get there, Saul. It's going to get there. Cyber. So you can use this with anything. Fix a model really quick, sculpt on it. You can use Sculptress Pro with it. You can use any sort of thing inside a ZBrush. You can see this happening in real time. You set your direction, fix your model, and now you're good to go. Now, as another example of this, I was thinking of things that um, I could use to demo, right? So coins are pretty good. So I snuck into Snall Saul's house and Snall. I'm sorry, what? Snall, <laughs> Snall Saul's house. You snuck into my house? <laughs> you, were, you were kind of asleep. I knocked. <laughs> and um, Saul's a big collector of like retro video games. And so this is true. I happened to find his copy of ZBrush 1988. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did you find that? Now, back then, all you could do was sculpt hair. Oh, that was essential. Because of the 80s. Because of the 80s, did right. Did you get of it? Because of the 80s. Because of the 80s. The Cause big hair. Because of the 80s. That's all it did. <laughs> so I found Saul's ZBrush 1988. There was only a few of these. I think a lot of them ended up in the desert. <laughs> near Area 51 with yeah. the alien. Just mm -hmm. so happens to be near, Just happened near to be there. Area 51. There's kind of an E.T. vibe there, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I stole his cart of ZBrush 1988. And of course, doing visit. what I do, <laughs> doing what I do, I took it apart. Because why not? As one does. As one does. And I generated a 3D version of it. <laughs> <laughs> did I write my name on it? You did in my head. <laughs> this is my copy. Nobody this can have Saul's it. This is Saul's copy. <laughs> so I'm going to flip this over. So to replicate this, I went through and used a little Z modeler brush here. Z modeler is my friend. And so we went through and we started generating and mimicking the internal structures of Saul's classic ZBrush 1988 cartridge. Now, it was really hard to use this program with that <laughs> D-pad. I don't know how you did it. It's your copy. <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't know how I did it. <laughs> so let's say now I want to take this, more of kind of a product example, and you want to check the draft angles on this. So I got my Saul's cartridge here. I'm going to go up to Transform. I'm going to activate my uh, draft angle analysis here. I'm just going to come up here to this section. And you can see right now I'm getting, you know, pretty good drafts. The company that made this cartridge did a pretty good job. They knew what they were doing. And so now I'm going to come through to transform, and I'm going to do my set direction just so I can kind of see it from this angle. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Maybe my angle is a little bit too harsh, so I can adjust this down slightly. And you'll see I have some of these red parts through here. So I've got, you know, pretty good coloring all the way around except for these areas. Now, one thing nice about this is that when I was building this, I was using Z Modeler. So these little parts are pretty simple, and they just have some dynamic subdivision applied so I can get that kind of nice, smooth bevel edge to it. So if I want to fix these, I could definitely go in and start sculpting on these, but I could also just modify the topology. So I have these little parts, and if I just isolate them here, here's one of these parts here. And this is very low res. So this process of seeing the draft angle is also going to work on very low res geometry. So this part here is really just this, right? And to fix this, all I need to do is say come in, mask the vertices of that point, switch to the move gizmo here, and scale this oh, the other way. And as I scale this out, I'm going to see that draft angle change, right? So now I'm getting that nice green color. I can apply my dynamic subdivision back and scale this a little bit more to make sure I got that really where it wants to be. And then I can get out of solo and check it among the other pieces. So not only can you tailor your shapes and see them update that draft angle by using sculpting, but you can also use any of the other tools inside of ZBrush. So you can come through, select the part, manipulate just the model itself, and you're going to see it update in real time. So this has been really handy, especially for mold making. So I'm doing some rubber molds. And now I don't have to kind of like guess the angles. I can kind of check them and see if they're appropriate. And then after they're good to go, I can send that part to print 
and not worry about messing up mold. Oh, yeah. Now we can make mass produ production of 1988. Seabrush 1988. <laughs> Bringing it back. Are you ready? I'm ready, sir. You ready to go? I am ready. Let's All do All right. Now let's switch over to Saul. Hey, how about it for Joseph Trust? Yeah. <laughs> Give me just a second. I need to load a couple things. Oh, you and your Mac keyboard. Yours is right there. Where? Right there. Well, oh. just move it. <clears throat> so, how, like, who, who here likes Louis Tucci's fog machine? I <laughs> <clears throat> love that fog machine. Mm -hmm. I kind of wanted you to, we should have modeled you a car. And stuck the fog machine in it, and then you could have sat in it oh, and like, this fogged is... it out. Like the mobile. Yeah. Uh huh. Next uh -huh. time. Next time. My Cadillac. Your Cadillac up here. Once you get the fog machine, anything's possible. Bison. Julie calls shotgun. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Always. Mm -hmm. My girl. My girl, Julie. Love you too, honey. Poor Julie. Did you name her Julie because of the Julie and Julie Z tool? She's listening. She <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry. She's already I apologize. Louis's been doing this for a little bit too long, and that fog machine is starting to affect him. The vape lounge. This is <laughs> the vape lounge. Hold on. Come on. Go back to Friday. Friday. It's going to load from scratch here. So, we got anybody from out of town? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah good question. How many, people, how many people are here for the first time? time. Make Woo! some noise. Hell yeah. Good choice. Right, right. on. Way to go. Give yourselves a round of applause. The people at home. What's happening there? You're, yes, it's you. What's your name? Brian. Brian, where are you from? Canada. Canada. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Hold on go. a second here. Time out a minute. Time. Where are you from in Canada, man? Vancouver. Okay, that's cool. From Toronto. Uh, it's good to see you. Good to see you too. Yeah, fellow Canuck. So that's way more than 100 miles. I was going to start going like, like 100 miles yeah, away. Up the highway, I mean, yeah, you know, that's, that's fair enough. Way, Anybody else yeah. from anywhere really far away? Anybody come a long distance? Where are you come from? Yeah, Anyone fly across an ocean? Chicago's not too far away, man. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's about to get far away as winter starts to happen. As you're far away from my soul, I'm trying to stay away in the winter. <laughs> like this, right? Wait, what, 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 what's happening over here? Whispering, what are we about? There's a guy, like, on the offset of our right here, bro. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here, of course. <laughs> so, so say long. Z long. Sure. Wait, wait to the people at home. Yeah. Hi. All the way from China. Hi. Absolutely. They're across the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, Pacific Ocean. Yeah, you might be you might be the furthest so far. You might be we're the furthest. Out. You might be the furthest. Well, I'm about to leave into the cosmic zone uh, as soon as this is over, so maybe tomorrow we're going to find out if I come back. <laughs> I might be the farthest out there. So, what's happening here? Are you Holy ready? Smoke. Look at right. He just sculpted hey, that with a new a break feature. Here. Give me a break here. Right, turn the smoke machine. Did you just make on. that? Holy smoke. All right, now we're good to go. Okay, so uh, you guys saw the list of things that we wanted to show you. Joseph uh, took some time to show you some sculpting and modeling things. Uh, so, I'm going to finish up with a few things on painting. So, we've made some few improvements uh, in the painting sector. So, here we're looking at Carlos Ortega's model, this uh, beautiful model. Sphinx model. If you guys have been walking around, uh, Mamaki has an amazing print of this. Uh, we love this sculpture. It's an amazing piece. Uh, obviously, in the stylized world, it's got an incredible pose. And in particular, it has a very nice sort of stylized painting texture. So uh, those of you who deal with poly paint when you're doing this kind of stylized work, uh, you may use something like a spray stroke with sort of a fleshy tone where you get a little bit of breakup. So you got the bony structures have some lighter tones. The you know areas in the ears are a little bit more saturated. Uh, then breaking up into the Sphinx, he's got a really nice sort of subtle transition into sort of blue fur with some stripes and uh, sort of animal skin. So sort of a lot going on here. Now, when you're poly painting and you're going through a process like this, as it's sort of like, uh, like that sort of airbrushing layering effect, you might spend some time figuring out your color schemes and then go in and really take the time to do things like uh, nice subtle gradients with the stripes, right? Where this has, he's got some so really subtle. beautiful subtle sort of transitions from here to the edges. And that stuff might take applying a mask and then applying color in between, all right? So there's time involved in going through that process. Now, we were thinking about this, and uh, in particularly when you're dealing with poly paint, uh, trying to give you guys some, some ways to actually make adjustments to the th these things much more easily. So we've actually made a, uh, created a new tool inside of the color palette. So I'm going to go in and bring up the color palette here. And in here, we have the, uh, a new palette called Poly Paint Color Utilities. And we have a new button called Adjust Color. 
So I'm going to launch this, and this is going to load up a window inside of ZBrush. So here we now have a view of our model, and you'll see we have some new options. So we can, right off the bat, dealing with the poly paint, we can go in and we can start to make hue adjustments, right? So very quick and easy, right? So when you're thinking about designing, instead of having to sort of solidify, okay, I want to stick with this, this sort of flesh tone and this blue, we can apply these things and then we can go through and make quick changes while we're concepting and figuring this out. Or maybe you just change your mind at the end and you want to go through and make an adjustment. Now, when you're done, we'll go through some of these other options. We've got saturation, contrast. But let's go ahead and just apply this. So clicking OK, ZBrush is now going to go process this and apply it to the poly paint. So, Again, this is, this is going not to texture here, people. not textures. Not We're not texture. dealing with textures, this not is UVs. On the this poly is poly paint. paint. So you're dealing with millions of polys, and you can do this all straight in ZBrush without having to go mess with your UVs and your textures. Now, with this particular feature, um, we loved this, and we were having a, a really good time sort of using this. But we were trying to think of ways to actually improve this and make this better. So for me, I would want to go through and maybe isolate on a particular area. So let's go back to Carlos's original state here. And let's just say you like the blue and you like the stripes, but you want to change the flesh tone, so just the skin. So again, there's a lot of breakup in here, right? And to be able to isolate that out, we could, you know, you might consider going in and doing something like a mask, painting it all in. Uh, that might take some time. You could use a lasso. But there is a lot of breakup in here, but using masking is sort of an easy approach. So we actually added some new features inside of the masking palette. So inside of the mask by color, we now actually have a mask by color button. So formerly, we were just dealing with mask by intensity, hue, and saturation. But now, if I open this up, this is going to go to our secondary navigation window, which we can kind of just zoom up here. And you'll see in here, we now have a series of layer sets. And this is going to deal with masking. So we're going to be masking from the poly paint color. So if you have different variations in breakup, let's just click and drag. And now anything in that color value is going to be masked and selected. So just dealing with one of these, right? you've got a, a simple option to click. We can, of course, inverse this. And we can, of course, use this tolerance slider to in sort of increase and bleed that over. Now, in this case, I don't want this to bleed over into those blues. right? So let's go back here. Uh, so increasing that tolerance, you see it's kind of going across here into the sort of blue paint. And I want to focus just on the flesh tones. So leaving this at that default tolerance. Oh, this cable's killing me. Do you want me to hold it? <laughs> Please. <laughs> yes, please, Joseph. I just want to type 30 and press enter. Oh, the numlock's probably not on. I bet that's it. I switched keyboards on them. Yep, there we go. OK, so back Cost to confusion. defaults, right? So this is what it captured. Now, of course, because there's a lot of breakup in these flesh tones, we can easily now use these other layers to start adding to this mask selection. So as we transition into these browns, I can go through, and I've got a lot of options. And mainly, I just want to get all of those flesh tones and even some of that skin. So here, I'm starting to get where that's bleeding in. And what makes the stylized sort of paint job look so good in this situation is when you have those nice subtle blurs and transitions. So as we get this to go across, we can actually assign a blur right here from this mask by color tool. And then, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right, so then of course you can compound this with the additional masking features that we have so we can soften that blur up quite a bit. And then we could of course inverse this now. And then as we use that to just quickly select it, go back to that adjust color. And we can use this to just go through and adjust our hue. All right, so you want to go that sort of maybe avatar route, maybe find a bluish green. Maybe I'll just go grab that purple. Uh, of course, you guys get it, contrast, red, greens, and blues. One of the things I love about this that I want to show you really quick is the tint. This actually will give us the option to go through and select a color, choose a level of saturation that you like, and we can actually blend this with the model as well. So very quick and easy adjustment, and we'll go through and apply this one. So thinking about this, when you've got specific things like the stripes, right? We could do this just to do the skin, but if you wanted to just go in and maybe just inverse this and deal with just that area now, you could do that separately. Or you could clear this and go back and just use mask selections to do things like the stripes, or in this case, he spent a lot of time with the tattoos, mm -hmm. right? We could just focus on those areas. And something on the point of masking, you know, if you're drawing a mask to create a shape like this, you might, this is something I do a lot where I'll spend a lot of time to go through and make a shape inverse it, fill it with color, and then I move on to another one. And a lot of times, I want to go back to that original selection and maybe make changes to it or use it to extract. And this is an option now to go back and make selections and do all kinds of things. 
Um, so uh, those are a couple things using adjust color and the mask by color. And I'm going to go take a look. Let's go take a look at another model, and we'll show off another new feature. So you guys realize how nice this is coming through and changing the poly paint? And let's send Carlos back. So you don't have to redo the entire poly paint to change that color. It's <laughs> just do a slider. Just do a slider. <gasps> Boop. Um, OK. So the next model I'm going to pull up is another amazing piece from Maria Panfilova, who is uh, kind of a rock star here at the summit. She's kind of doing everything. But uh, she's allowed us to use one of her amazing pieces. Um, I think it's just Girl, Girl on Bear. <laughs> <laughs> at least that's what the file name is. But uh, it's a gorgeous piece. We love it. It's an elegant pose and a great scene. In particular, I want to focus on one element here, this untextured blanket. So I want to go in here, and I want to use some of these new texturing features to assign some sort of pattern to this. right? And so let's solo this out. And it, the, kind of going along with the theme, it's sort of tribal, Native American, somewhere in there. So this has got a little bit of curvature. And for me, this would be an easy thing to go in and maybe do some mass by cavity to fill in the cracks and you know, paint it by hand if you wanted to. But Spotlight is a really great tool to just grab something really quick and easy. So here's a, a nice pattern that's sort of somewhere in the ballpark, I think, of the style. Maybe I just try it out. So what I want to do is just use Spotlight to project this onto the mesh. So I can easily sort of align this from that top view, kind of use my rotation controls, go in and just get that in there. And then I'll switch to my paintbrush, and then we'll just project this down onto that mesh. So Spotlight's really easy to do stuff like this. Now, in this case, though, because I'm dealing with a mesh that's not flat, so I'm dealing with a two-dimensional image and trying to apply this to a 3D object that has curvature that's wrapping down, a lot of times you'll run into issues like this, where you're trying to get a clean projection and it's warping, right? It looks good on top, but it doesn't look good on the sides. And this is just dealing with just the separation between the two. So we wanted to make this process a lot easier as well. So let's undo this guy. And what I want to do is actually uh, we're going to go in and we're going to talk about something new inside of uh, or an adjustment inside of this, the Morph UV option. So uh, if you guys don't know, you can click the Morph UV button, which is going to flatten this to that UV state. So it's just a simple UV master unwrap one solid shell, but it's going to give you that two-dimensional state, which is a great place to start. So I'm going to go back here to the 3D view really quick. And I just want to kind of give myself a little roadmap of where I want this to go. So I want the, so the diamonds to maybe travel along the center, right, to have some sort of symmetrical unwrap or symmetrical projection. So I'll go in, and I'm just going to kind of give myself a little arrow. Right? So I want that to travel along the middle. So when I apply something like this to the paint, that's going to transfer along with that Morphe V state. And now what I can do is bring this image in. So I can use my center points. I can kind of look at the arrows here. If I have a symmetrical image like this, and just get a better sort of even projection. And let's go back and push this through. All right, so in this state, you'll see we don't have to deal with any of those strange projections. And now when we go back to that Morphe V state, going back to 3D, this is a really nice, clean projection. You just painted on flat UVs, people. <laughs> so then taking a look at this as we're still talking about painting. Wait, wait, they still got to take this in. Take, take it they in, gotta people. Take it in. You got a whole night to think you about just it. just unfolded, <laughs> painted, refolded. <laughs> And it made the transformer sound. <laughs> That's one thing we do need to add. <laughs> We're working on that. Um, so then looking at the stuff we just talked about, um, I like the pattern here, but maybe I don't like the color scheme and I want to make a quick adjustment. So it's you know something to think about. Of course, you could Photoshop this, but why would I want to bounce back and forth to something else when I can do this all here? So with adjust color, I can easily go in, launch this thing up, and dealing with poly paint again, I can go through and maybe find a different sort of color set here. So I like the purples in this. So I'll go click OK. For this paint job, maybe like desaturate, I could apply some of those things. But in this case, I don't really like the greens. So going back to that mask by color, this is where I can go back with that previous uh, setup. I can just reset. And let's go in and just color pick that green. And now here's where I can really make use of that tolerance to kind of go in and really make sure I capture all those edges. Oops, not that one, this one. There we go. And then we could inverse that. And you could go back to adjust color to use the slider, but you know there's nothing wrong with a good old-fashioned brush in a color. 
like kindergarten again. Going back <laughs> to the coloring book. It was only masking back For then. some reason, I get so much satisfaction doing this. <laughs> Grabbing a mask, inversing, there we go, oh yeah. Okay, so just changing a color set. So I can do that for all of these, right? Thinking about images that have solid colors, and we could just grab selections and do this let's so much easier. Let's see it on the bear. Easier. Let's see it on the bear. Okay, let's see it on the bear. There we go. There we go. Right? It's so, it matches perfectly. <laughs> I mean, it's right <laughs> in there. <laughs> Send it off. Print it. <laughs> Sorry, Maria. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, one thing that I do want to bring up here that... Uh, before, I'm going to get into one more thing. So Joseph got to take all the sculpting stuff. I want to show you one more thing with sculpting. Uh, but first, I want to talk about a cosmetic change we've made inside of ZBrush. So inside of the Preferences palette, we have a new palette called Cam View. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at this. So when I turn this option on, and you start rotating the model, we now have an option to give you orientation, the front, back, left, right, and top and bottom of the model. So very standard in application. So this is something that... In ZBrush, you know, we tend to not like it, sculpturally speaking, it's a lot better to just kind of view it in the round. But sometimes you need to know, and I don't like to use the floor grid. In floor grid, even sometimes you might not even be able to see it, depending on your scene. And so we have an easy way to just sort of view around as it keeps rotating. Now there's a few options here. You can click the X axis once to go left, once to go right, Y axis to go top, once again to go bottom, and then Z axis to go front and back. Right, so very quick and easy. And of course, we love to give you guys options to customize stuff so you can change the size of it. You can you, make it earthquake, people. You can make it earthquake. So there's a, there's a next button that's gonna cycle through some presets. And Joseph's- There we uh, go. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Joseph dreams of earthquake every night. <laughs> Just remember he said that. <laughs> right, and then of course, uh, we didn't stop there. We give you the option to make your own. So in this case, let's go back to Carlos's model. And uh, when you're doing this, basically you just want to make sure that your model is centered where the z-axis is the sort of front-facing axis inside of ZBrush. So z-axis being front and back. So as long as your model is centered in the world space and it's aligned properly, all we got to do is, let's turn it off. We can do perspective. You want to turn that base off? Uh, yes, actually. That's a good point, Joseph. Let's do that. We're going to go in. So, you know, maybe I want this to be free floating. So I'll just disable. We can turn off any subtools we want, anything you want to be visible. And then we can go in and let's do make cam view. So it's going to capture a series of images to give you that 360. Look how much rotation. fun Earthquake's having. So much that's, fun. Uh, that's, that's where he gets his great figure. Where'd he go? And now Where'd he go? you have a new sort Where'd of Earthquake rotation. Where'd Earthquake go, Saul? He's gone. <laughs> Joseph, it's okay. He's back. He's still there. Uh, He's okay, still there. Okay. We can get him back. Woo. All right, you can go back to the earth. <laughs> nope, it's gone now. I had to bring your earthquake back. Oh, okay, we'll create it again. I don't think they saw that. Okay, we'll do it. Make one more time. earthquake dance one more time. Earthquake dance. <laughs> <laughs> we should put another model in there that's just a thinned out version of him. <laughs> He's been dancing for He's so many hours. He's just lost so much weight in the last. <laughs> He's been doing 360 degree rotations. All right, so there you go. So you get a nice clean rotation. And then if you ever need to go back to the originals, you can cycle through those. Okay, so I uh, just wanted to take a quick note to show that. And uh, one last thing I want to show you guys is going back to that morph UV state. I want to talk quickly about some sculpture additions with that as well. So here I've got a character that I've been working on and it's sort of like a sort of in mid-range state where I want to go through and starting to get to clothing folds and particularly seams. And now I'm going to take a look at a single asset, this jacket here. Now if anybody, that's one thing I do need to load. Oh, Friday. Wait for it. Where's, uh, sorry, Tamar, where's my... Hmm. All right. As Saul's finding some it. files here. Louie, how you doing? You still awake? Uh, it's, a, it's a brush, actually. The brush. Well, we could, we could do it with anything. It really doesn't matter. At this point, it doesn't matter. Um, all I want to show you, we can use the Damien standard brush, right? So Ubisoft was uh, showing a great presentation today on just getting into like clothing folds and seams, right? You start to get to seams where you want to have a clean brush stroke. Now, if you guys get into using custom brushes where they have a custom alpha, they have some really great seams. Uh, if you have ever done this before, like in this case, something I don't 
always keep tabs on us. We always sort of T-pose our meshes, so we leave room to do all the sculpting where you have overlapping geometry. But in this case, or maybe you're doing a really dynamic pose where the arm is bent, and you have things that are sort of folding over. So for this example, you've got sort of the sleet, the underarm is sort of converging on itself, so it's actually overlapping inside of that surface. So not only is that an issue that we're presented with, but if I want to do a stroke, let's go just using Damien standard, go with lazy radius. Just going in and trying to complete a stroke, I've got to consider my camera angle in this case, and I get to this area where I'm trying to complete that stroke, and then going over, I start to run into issues, right? It becomes more challenging to complete a long stroke like that along a surface like that. So going back to this morph UV state, we can actually use that to our advantage. So what I'm going to do here is just the same thing I did with the blanket, is just give myself a little sort of road map. So we just did, let's turn off this texture, just a simple UV master shell unwrap. So I want this to sort of start here and then finish here. So this is going to, of course, travel through. And now I've got myself a nice sort of clean road map here. And then we can go back to that Damien standard brush. And having this in this 2D state is giving me the ability to complete a long stroke like this and go all the way across, right? I don't have to deal with any of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then I'll go back, clear out that red paint, let's unmorph, and now you got that really nice clean seam, right? So super powerful. And then, of course, one last little trick is let's take a look at maybe one more texture since we're in the sort of spotlight they're, they're realm They're telling here. us we're close to the end of time. Yeah, we're, this is the last thing, Joseph. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's take a look here. So I want to maybe take advantage now that I have spotlight. You know, now that we're not forced to say use something like to we want to do sort of sculpting detail and paint at the same time, we're not forced to go to surface noise and use UVs in the ways that we have been. So going to a morph UV state, we could maybe take an image like this inside a spotlight and actually giving me more flexibility with spotlight, I can take an image that's tiled, maybe go in if I want to make this a sort of smaller kind of texture, so maybe increase this. Now, I want to do sculpture detail, so this might be good with the paintbrush. And I'll do just a little bit of low Z intensity and I'll turn that opacity down so you guys can see this. And then while I'm in this state, just let's go across. So the layer brush, right, as long as I don't pick up my pen, is just going to apply a single layer application of that Z-Add. Right? So it's not overlapping in any way. So uh, the standard brush might not work as well for this, but layer brush is perfect. I can turn this off, disable that Morph UV, and I've just applied both of those things very quickly. So a lot of things you could do with this feature. Um, we're loving this, and hopefully you guys are going to love this if we give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so that's it for presentation stuff. One thing we do want to show you guys before we go. One more thing. We get, it's getting close, There's Paul. many one more things. It's getting close, Paul. I just called you Paul. Okay, so we... I just uh, called you Paul. Oh, 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 oh poor Paul. Poor Paul. <laughs> Has anybody seen Paul? We're still looking for him. Okay, so uh, real quick, this is something that we want to provide to you guys when this version is released. Inside of Lightbox, inside of uh, the Projects tab, we have a folder called Zizu. So we've paired up with Wes Anderson and Steve Zizou. So if you look <laughs> under your chairs, there should be a red sailor cap and a harpoon gun. <laughs> no, we actually have uh, created a repository of uh, a ton of mannequins, pre-built mannequins. We're working with artists uh, like Shane Olson, for example, who's helped us create a lot of these. <laughs> right, so of course, there's a lot of stuff in ZBrush, uh, but you guys spend a lot of time making stuff. I see a lot of people using models and things just to start if you need to build a scene. We're going to be working to create tons of these. So we've got a lot of these guys in here. You can see the great stuff we have mannequins. so far. Mannequins. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it, guys. That's it. thing for you guys. Yeah! We stop here too. Okay! Tomorrow night, we have the ZBrush Award Ceremony. After that, here at Noman, we're having an after party, so come on out to Don't that. you dare miss it. And that Tomorrow's tomorrow the big day, evening. Saturday. Want to keep everybody abreast and informed. We have exactly. the 20% off until 11.59 on Monday. Okay? Then it turns into Take a pumpkin out, again. Uh, also, don't forget, uh, MPC tomorrow is, uh, we're not going to be able to live stream MPC's presentation. On-site only. Tell so us. If you want to see that one, they give amazing presentations. you got to be here for that. 
Uh, if you're not, if you're in, tuning into the stream, we'll be doing, I'll be doing a podcast with Raphael Grissetti for that hour and a half. So great stuff on both ends. Everybody put your hands together Thank around you the all. globe, uh, the ZBrush Summit 2019.